Hello and welcome. Thanks for joining us for the weekly wrap up for this Friday, May 3rd, 2024. Pray this finds you well. And as always, we have a lot to cover, so let's get right to it. Um, we had interviews this week with the legendary Jim Willie, which many of you requested. Uh, it's a rather long interview, so we're going to chop it up in parts, and that should be coming out later today. Uh, please keep Greg Manorino in your prayers. We were scheduled to have an interview with him on Thursday. Uh, his sister is very sick, and we're doing our best to give him some holistic solutions that might help aid in that. But please keep uh, Lori in your prayers uh, as she's battling a pretty serious battle right now, not unlike a lot of people. Um, he's slated to come on next week. Uh, and then we have later today, the wonderfully talented Denise Boland. We always look forward to catching up with her. As I mentioned, next week, we are going to be having uh, a series of interviews. Um, let me take a look at the schedule so I, I don't try to go off rote memory here for you. But uh, next week, we're looking at some exciting interviews. We're going to have Eli Weber. And then later in the week, we'll have, as I mentioned, Greg Manorino, SGN on. Uh, Andy Sheckman is joining us for a return engagement. We're excited to hear what he has to offer. And of course, uh, Ian Farrar from uh, Perium. Uh, with his latest updates, and then uh, Derek Johnson to round out the week. So should be a, a pretty stellar packed week in terms of information uh, and informative updates. Okay, so let's jump right into the headline news. Uh, Peloton CEO Barry McCarthy to step down amidst fresh layoffs. Uh, HSBC CEO Noel Quinn uh, abruptly resigned in a surprise departure. Even the board didn't know it was coming. That's pretty significant because it's one of the world's largest major banks, and uh, they're having dissension among the ranks. Kind of makes you wonder what else is going to come up as a result of that. We shall see. Barclays Bank <clears throat> to lay off hundreds of workers as a result of the, really it's a depression, but they're calling it a recession. Uh, the ZIG, the new uh, Zimbabwe gold-backed dollar circulation, started officially on April 30th with their own gold-backed coins along with notes, of course. Rite Aid officially declares bankruptcy now. They had closed up, uh, I believe it was 53 stores a few weeks ago, so they are officially filing for bankruptcy. The BRICS culture and global strength continues to grow, no surprise, uh, with an upcoming 40 countries set to join at their October conference. And what's interesting to note, folks, is they just did a $260 billion trade without the dollar. So they're trading in other currencies, the China Yuan, they're also trading assets, something real for something real, like Bill Holter talked about. Uh, Jim and I discussed that at length today in our interview, which is, as I mentioned before, you will see, he gets into great detail about that. So you're gonna see a, a repetitive effect with his information against what we're sharing here. Uh, Google continues the massive layoffs as they send 200 jobs overseas. Amazon continues their layoffs. Fed Chair Jerome Powell holds interest rates as a pause for the month, no big surprise. Uh, we still believe that uh, they may do a interest rate, uh, either a hike or a drop, uh, either June or July. Now, if they do a hike, that's going to spell doom for the stock market. So uh, the powers that be are trying to manipulate the timeframes, but uh, we all know that that's coming here sooner, probably sooner rather than later. Uh, WeWork shuts down its New York City headquarters. So we'll watch to see if they shut down many other offices throughout the U.S. as well. <clears throat> Gold, as of this broadcast, uh, 23.1190, silver 26.63, and Brent crude oil 83.96. Now, we attribute some of that to some of the shareholders taking profits, but also a bit of the, the last bits of suppression of these commodities because they know that at some point they're going to explode here in the not too distant future. So they're trying, the deep state trying their last bits to tamp it down, but that's, there's inevitability it's gonna pop up. Now I wanna make a special acknowledgement in the news to Ariel. He puts out a lot of great articles, as you all know, and we, we like you respect and appreciate his efforts very much. But specifically with respect to the Zim bonds, he talked about how they are pegged to the US dollar and that they do have the gold that can back the 100 trillion and 50 trillion and all the different notes in the AA and AB series. We had been talking about that for quite some time, but it's nice to see somebody of his stature come along and just continue to support and substantiate that. And those articles can be found in our Telegram channel. For those of you who are not already members, we 
we recommend you do that so you can see, not because we're trying to add people, we just want you to see the article. So you're not taking our word for it, you're seeing the actual information come to light. But we recommend you check that out. He, uh, he put those articles out, I believe, on Wednesday earlier this week, and uh, it was very meaty material, and he sources all of his content. So I think many of you will find it uh, enjoyable and also confirming. Now, so I want to switch to our commentary section. Um, we had a question, and then there's something that I want to clean up as well as we typically do on our, on our podcast, because this is one of the rare chances I have to talk to you as an audience, kind of one-on-one, -on -one, so to speak. Uh, somebody keeps asking about the aggro checks. We've already covered that. I, I really don't like repeating myself. I'm not, <laughs> don't want to hear myself that much. And, and I want you folks to get it. I'm speaking to the ones who are still not uh, resonating with the mindset that needs to happen. Um, yes, the aggro checks are going to go. Yes, they will do exceedingly well. If the bonds and the dollars are going, which they will, the aggro checks will follow suit. We don't do dates and rates here. We don't get in that. If that's what you're looking for, you can find plenty of other places elsewhere that will give you that. That's not what we're in about. What that indicates to us is a mindset change has not happened. You should not be concerned about dates and rates. What you should be concerned about is what you're going to do when it comes, how you're going to build a legacy for your children, your children's children down the line, uh, how you're going to fund your projects, who else is going to be blessed by it, and being able to be flexible to where God tells you to go. I, I talked about this in last week's show. I'll say it again. The key to this, the success in our, in our belief is that you must be accountable for variable change. Be flexible. This is, will happen, but it will not happen the way a lot of people told you it will, because ultimately nobody knows 100% until we get there. Um, we're just giving you what we see coming down the line so that you can draw your own conclusions. But the key to it is being flexible, having an open mindset, asking critical questions and being able to move at the rate of change, however it goes, instead of being stuck in a dogmatic mindset that because a group of people told you 10 years ago, it's going to be this way, that that's all that is. That's really a cop-out. Honestly, it is. You need to be flexible and open because things are changing so quickly as we can see that that, that mindset will really hamper you. So we, we really want to encourage you. Don't Please don't ask any more questions about certain bonds or currencies or dates and rates, we're not going to answer them. That's not what we do here. You can go elsewhere for that. Our audience is very discerning and discriminating about the information and wants to go deeper and understand, as my friend Joe says, how the sausage is made rather than just getting to the end result. Because if you don't understand the steps, you won't get to the end point. The steps are very important. The puzzle pieces are critical. And uh, the, uh, the patriots and those who are on the right side of things are giving us clues and hints so that we will uh, put these pieces together and figure it out and empower ourselves to move to the next step. So that's that. <clears throat> now, I don't get to read all the comments, obviously, because as you can see, I need to be busy, but our team does a really great job of trying to field the comments to the best of their ability uh, and give you all the individual attention that you need and deserve. Very difficult to do, but we do our level best. But one thing that was brought to me by one of my team members was um, in regards to the show that I did last week with the presentation with Nick Benny uh, a couple of real estate agents, I guess, misunderstood what I was saying in regards to the corruption within the industry. And I want to clear that up right now. Okay, so let's set some guidelines here. First of all, when I do Nick's show, I literally get 20 or 25 minutes to do a presentation. And then he asks questions, which I have to then break down and dissect. So I'm going through a lot of information speeding through it in a very short period of time. And so things get lost in translation and, and I don't have the chance to break down every single point because then we would have much more elongated show. So that's first and foremost. Second of all, please don't put words in my mouth. I never said that real estate agents are all corrupt or that the industry is horrible. I never said that. What I was referring to was the corruption in the Ponzi scheme as it relates to the banking centers and the banking industry and the loans that were given out frivolously during the bailout period. And, and please don't assume what I do and don't know about the real estate industry. I've owned three homes before. I have a dear friend, Nancy, who is about as fine of a person as God has ever put on this planet that is my own personal real estate agent. When I moved to Tennessee, I'm buying a lot of land with her. I trust her implicitly. She's been in the industry for well over 20 years, okay? So I know there are great real estate agents. She's one of many, but I'm blessed to know her. 
I, uh, I had a compliance officer, chief compliance officer at a major bank that I knew back in my days in New York and, and New England when I lived there, but from that growing up from that area, who told me in no uncertain terms off, off the record just how corrupt it was and how much illegal lending and the interest rate floating and uh, you know lending out other people's money and just making up artificial rates and uh, you know, basically just profiting off the backs of every time they did a, a HELOC, a home equity line of credit. Okay. So I'm very aware of the, of the real estate industry, having been, you know, from a consumer standpoint and knowing real estate agents and so on and so forth. Look, every industry in the world has good and bad people in it. Okay. No industry is perfect. Okay. But one of the good things that this new lawsuit is doing is it will shake out a lot like it did in 2008. A lot of those people who got into the industry just to make a quick buck, which which got in the way and sullied the reputation, the reputation of many good real estate agents like many of you are watching who have been dedicated to your clients for, you know, 5, 10, 20, 30, 40 years. Right. So I was referring to the banking system and how it affects the uh, real estate industry and, and how it's going to. Uh, with this new uh, settlement that has come out that takes effect, I believe, early, Nancy tells me early to mid-July with the commission structure, which was always negotiable, yes, but is going to effectuate how you disclose that and how negotiations occur. It's going to make things harder for those who just got into the industry for the easy money. And it's going to, I think, in the long run, actually reward the loyal real estate agents that have stuck by their clients. So I want to be clear about that. Please don't put words in my mouth or interpret what you think I said. That's not what I was saying at all. Give a little grace and deference. Some of you need to learn to give yourself some grace because maybe if you did that, you could give it to somebody else. We're all stressed. We're all going through it. The tension is palpable. I get that. But you know, making accusations and turning on each other and reacting emotionally is not the best way to go. We need to take a step back, all of us, and think critically about the information we get and whether we really understood it or not. This is the, the, the last thing we need to do. And the worst thing we could do is be a, a verbal firing squad on each other. That accomplishes nothing. And it just gives the enemy ground for more division and dissension, which we do not want, you do not, not want, and it's just not gonna be conducive for anything good. So I just wanted to get that cleared up. Also some new information that just came across the uh, XRP is continuing to move forward in dramatic uh, fashion as it's tying itself more and more to the new digital economic reality, We're working with real-time settlements on the blockchain and also with the BRICS nations. They're intertwining it. I'm sure many of you already know, but it's just good to reprise that. Also, um, Ripple locks 800 million coins amid massive XRP movements. We also talked about that to, uh, today on the Jim Willie podcast. He talks about uh, XRP's potentiality and what its real value is going to be in the very near future, meaning within the next one to two years, maybe not even that. So I think we've cleared all that up. Uh, I just want to say a heartfelt thank you to all of our loyal, faithful supporters, subscribers, and followers, those of you who have stayed with us, uh, who, who knew me for many years back and who have been on this channel for the last, I don't know, six, seven months since I've been on it. And, uh, and your kind comments and your support, we truly appreciate all that you do. You are the reason that we're able to be here today to do this work. Your support is vital and integral to the process. And we just want to take a moment to acknowledge and thank you for that. And to all of our haters, doubters, detractors, trolls, bots, right fighters, energy draining vampires, and endless negativity types, God be with you also. Okay. And we pray Luke 27, 13 over you. When you know, you know. So um, your negativity isn't going to stop us. It's not going to accomplish anything. And we would just thank you. If you're not happy with what you're hearing, you can go elsewhere. There's many other options for you, but you're not going to bring that negativity here. Uh, and our followers are not going to support that either. So please, folks, if you see that, just ignore them. Pay them no mind. Pray for them because they need it. They're going through tough times as well as you are and everybody else. They're just channeling it in an incorrect fashion, but it will not stop um, us sharing with you the information and getting the truth out and encouraging you in love to keep going forward. And remember, the goal here is not to be right because no one is 100% of the time except for God. The goal here is to lock arms and win and cross this finish line together. And how do we do that? 
we stay together in unity and oneness, positive thinking, helping one another, and, and shaking off the, the negativity and just moving past it and staying focused is the key. Because really what those haters want to do is create a distraction to get you off focus. Don't help them out. Just pay them no mind and we'll move forward. Well, that does it for this week. Um, thank you so much for your support. Once again, as always, we'll put out breaking news if something should come up. Otherwise, we will see you on the shows and for next week's wrap up. Take care and God bless.